All right. So what we would like to establish today is the overview of what we're doing as an outsourced CFO and finance chair for our clients. Um, four things that we're going to go over and we're going to we're going to look at some graphs. We're going to look at uh, a sample vision, a sample org chart, a sample forecast. Um, and what this all means and how they all really work together. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is the vision uh, statement um, as well as the structure of what that looks like. The second thing is I, I said the uh, org chart um, and the roles and the responsibilities of everybody um, on the team and what that looks like. Um, and then number three, we're going to look at uh, the forecast and how that intertwines with a budget and then the last thing we're going to look at is the departmental meeting uh, framework and how the forecast division and the org chart actually all flow directly in to these traction level 10 weekly meetings and what those look like from a departmental level uh, so let's dive right in i'm going to do a screen share let's see here Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at is right here. So uh, especially if you've read uh, Traction, EOS Traction, or if you're familiar with it, you're going to see those first couple chapters is really about establishing what that that big five-year target is for you, what that goal is um, for you and your company, what your core values are, what your core focus is, what are some of these things that make you unique as a company, and really nailing those down as a team um, because that's going to lay the foundation for really everything else that we're going to do. And as, as much as we want to dive directly into forecasting and budgeting and the numbers and the, and the, stri the strategy around those numbers, this actually is step number one. Um, so whatever that kind of, we've left that blank right here, that, that five-year target, we back into the three-year target, and that helps us back into the one-year goal. So this legitimately is, is number one, and typically this is a function that the management team is going to want to do, take a half day, uh, it doesn't matter if we're three people, if we're five people in our kind of leadership team, um, but we really want to take like a half day and collectively as a group establish each of these these items. And then with that, um, and ideally at that same meeting if we can do it, is then go over the org chart. And in the beginning, trust me, I mean, especially us, this is this is Fusion's org chart. Um, me at the, as the leader, we have Kathy heading up operations, Danielle is the integrator, Stephen is the finance chair. Um, we've got, you know, within the operational work that we do, we have a number of people under our, our, our operations lead. Um, and then uh, under Danielle, we have a number of people, um, and as we're going to dive into in, a, in just a sec, uh, under her as the marketing coordinator, partner coordinator, et cetera. So that, but at the beginning, especially for us, when we, before we really implemented traction and this methodology and framework, man, we had a couple of us sitting in every single one of these chairs. For example, me and Danielle were both kind of sitting in the marketing chair. Um, me and Steven and Kathy were all really in operations as the lead. Um, and while we're functioning very well, we didn't the, the roles and responsibilities could could get confused from time to time and as we were implementing this this process and and you know what i end up um i, I kind of stole this from mckinsey and company um i kind of they had a moniker of, of when mckinsey started back in the 1920s the consulting company they were mckinsey cpas and management engineers and i really kind of rang home as we were diving into this and understanding that um, yes, we're, we're, we're sitting in the finance chair and the, as the outsourced CFO, but we're really heavily involved in management engineering of the entire entity um, because each department is going to have their own KPIs and they need to be um, very unique and separate um, with clear roles and responsibilities. So this is just a, a quick glimpse of what a org chart can look like, and again, a lot of times we have multiple people sitting in multiple chairs, um, and so this is a good process to kind of um, get some clarity into that. So the next thing I kind of want to look at is after this, after we've established our org chart, after we've established our core values and our vision, um, now we have some, some fundamental 
um, let's call it assumptions for which we can build out a a forecast and so this is a sample forecast that is is many times very typical of of any company um, so you'll see here at the top line we've got four different revenue streams number one we have a recurring revenue stream for this company we've got a um, and that could be like a SaaS, you know just a, a, some kind of service that it could be 50 bucks a month that is being charged every single month to clients we've got a revenue source number two that's ad hoc and project base you know, for example, if you were just building websites, you could have, you know, $5,000 website build and you just do five of those every single month or something like that. Cyclical, um, a lot of companies, whether you're a CPA firm in the tax world um, or you might be in e-commerce and we have a huge kind of holiday rush, for example, what we're going into now. So a lot of companies have some kind of cyclical uh, revenue stream. And so whenever we're we're doing our forecast we want to take that into account and by the way this excel document is an output of some software we have so we're you know gone are the days of us manipulating excel for everything this is actually an output of a of a bigger um uh, SaaS platform that we use to generate this but it, i'd like to kind of toy um after the fact with it in excel and then for for this company here we're launching a new revenue stream um, in uh, in 2020. And so to give you an idea of what some of the assumptions that we're going into this particular company is it's, it's anticipating a 20% organic uh, revenue growth in its first three revenue lines. And then we're launching a new revenue line in, 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 um, in line number four in 2020. Now, I also wanna say something, this is organic growth. If we, part of our 2020 goal was also inorganic growth, meaning if we were gonna acquire a company, we very might, well might likely have a separate forecast for just that entity. If we already had the financials with that entity, um, we would want to um, be, be doing a lot of different changes. And I, and I think to confuse our, our current operation with a brand new operation that has different fundamentals would be a little bit rough. And so I think this is a little bit more, more clear, but for purposes of this video, we're just gonna focus on the organic growth. So one thing that kind of came into play with these assumptions, obviously I said we've got 20% going on on top line, but we have to identify what are the drivers that are going to contribute to our organic growth in that 20% and then also this new product launch. And so if we go down to here, we established for this company that we've got three main drivers. We've got um, marketing spend um, we've got, um, that we're going to launch right here in January 2020. We've got a partner coordinator that is going to be launched in June of 2020. And then we've got some inside sales reps, um, two of which that are going to start in September 2020. Um, we also have a doubling of ad spend that's associated with each new person that comes on, especially within the marketing coordinator position. And I, one thing that's very important here within any forecast, and, and this part of the role is the finance chair, especially using the EOS traction methodology, in the departmental meetings is that this is a living breathing document we're making a set of assumptions here that you know marketing coordinator we've we've made an assumption that um, it's going to take three months for this marketing coordinator to get up to speed and then we're going to start to begin to see the roi on that revenue coordinator in month four in april you can see it up here where it starts to kick and and we've actually made for purposes of this this forecast an assumption that the roi of this marketing coordinator is going to be a multiple of five over 12 months um, and so we have a similar thing going on here with the partner coordinator and the inside sales but what this is helping us do is giving us clarity into the amount that we need a budget for on an ongoing basis from a monetary um, uh, point of view um, and then we can help get clarity obviously from uh, as I just said the, the the financial aspect but then an operational aspect so for example if we have the partner coordinator starting in June it's going to take us a couple months to interview and recruit this individual so then part of our departmental KPIs and maybe operations or recruiting is going to be maybe to begin the recruiting process maybe in February or March of 2020 so that so that we are ready to truly have that person start and hit the ground running in June. So this is the, the, the third piece of that one to show you guys. 
another fourth is going to be now implementing um, this knowledge of our goals and our vision um, down to a departmental level. And so I'm going to show you two different ones. So right here, this is actually uh, the Visionary Integrator Framework, um, which is when we hold uh, one of this departmental meeting, um, it typically lasts around an hour and a half, and I'll show you the agenda right here. We start with a segue, <laughs> just to kind of break the ice. And I know I'm talking super fast, but I really want to kind of get through this in a in a timely manner so that um, we're not taking up too much time. And then I'm also about to show you the operations and finance framework. But you start off with a segue. Let's just break the ice. Um, then we, we, we dive into the scorecard. Um, and this is going to be an output of what are the things that the integrator and the marketing team needs to execute to help realize that 20% growth. And this is a process, process in itself. We started, as I mentioned, um, before this thing began um, with a hopefully a four-hour session of management to get the goals and the vision. This is going to be another two, three-hour kind of meeting to try to nail down what this scorecard is going to be um, to help you uh, consistently meet these goals to, to get you to that larger revenue uh, and strategic uh, goal. So I have scorecard, I have rocks. Um, we're actually going to, this a rock is about a 90 day goal um, and we redo these rocks every single 90 days. And, and at each of these weekly meetings, we're saying, hey, are we on track? Are we off track to meeting this goal? Um, and again, remember that rock is contributing to your total one-year goal at the end of 2020. Another uh, piece of the agenda that we go through is, is just people headlines. This could be something, in the, and I've left this blank for now. It could be a pipeliner headline. We know that we're going to have a marketing coordinator starting in January. It could be a customer headline. I think we had one in, uh, in the operations thing. Uh, we just added, you know, one of our CPAs got a, a great client review for some year on tax planning work they had done. Um, then we have a couple other sections on here, the, the weekly to-do list as well as an IDS. Um, and in, in an IDS, we end up filling this up throughout the week. This is this this becomes kind of an area of brain dump for the ideas that are coming to us or problems. So we 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 actually section these off into op opportunities or problems that might be contributing or taking away from our annual goal as well as our quarterly rocks. And so this becomes a brain dump each week of things that we need to discuss at that meeting. And as you'll see in our agenda, we leave 60 minutes for this. And we want to take the top, we want to select the top three highest priority issues to discuss. And then we we end up saying, okay, well, are, is this a to-do list that we can tackle in this coming week? Who's going to be, a, who is it going to be assigned to? Um, and then we just move on from there. One thing that I would kind of like a personal experience share that I'll kind of share with this is we ended up having a whole bunch of little marketing opportunity kind of things. And this is a very cleaned up version of, of our actual internal companies. Uh, the IDS sheet, it's a lot more messy than this. Um, but that being said, uh, one thing that was coming up is we were having a lot of um, IDSs in this kind of marketing world and this was before we really realized that we needed to hire a full-time marketing coordinator outside of danielle and myself because we were both sitting in that chair and so this organically created the opportunity for us to to create our next new hire because we were understanding that the root problem of a lot of these these um issues that we were documenting were just we didn't have a dedicated full-time person to keep these things moving along um and so that was really really an eye-opener, a really uh, powerful piece of, of what we were doing. So this is um, an example of the Visionary Integrator Framework. Uh, over here, we have an example. Let's go over to the scorecard. This is an example of the Operational and Finance Framework. Right now for us, because you know we're roughly 12 people at the moment, our, our finance chair and our ops chair, are, we're doing that meeting together. Um, once we have our full-time marketing coordinator um, start, we're going to have a separate meeting for just the marketing department. So as you can imagine, as we begin to grow, we're going to have more delineated team meetings on a departmental, um, uh, from a de departmental standpoint. 
So um, that is that from these these two departmental meetings. I just want to kind of give you a glimpse into what it can look like. Um, and then so us as the finance chair and and helping to implement and facilitate these meetings. Again, I kind of I kind of mentioned that part of our job is management engineering. Um, we're creating from this forecast, from our goals, um, roles and responsibilities, and through these scorecards, roles of, a, of accountability um, on an ongoing um, uh, in an ongoing manner and I think that's the that's the toughest thing for most small businesses to do is kind of establish this this continuous form of accountability um, and putting some metrics behind it because if we don't have that ongoing accountability there is no chance we're just keeping our fingers crossed otherwise there's no chance we're actually going to hit these 2020 goals these 2021 you know 2030 goals that we're really striving for. So I talked super fast <laughs> there, but I just want to give you a quick idea. Um, shoot me an email. Let's hop on a call if you have any questions on this. Um, look forward to working with you. Thanks.